Hello, I'm Father Finch. I'm a member of the Linux Lugcast, and recently on episode 37, I had a conversation about SSS, SSH reverse tunneling. And since this is an audio podcast, um, I did not do adequate justice to the fun of SSH tunneling, reverse tunneling. So uh, I've set up this video, and hopefully you'll learn from it. So the podcast episode number 37 goes into much more detail about what I was trying to accomplish. Um, but here's the basic scenario I have. I set up VMs on this, so there's a, a router here, a router here, and a router here to simulate uh, connections to the internet. Now this device can't talk to this device or this device because there's no public uh, address that allows connections in. Likewise here on my side I can go out but nothing can come back in. This guy out here however has a public IP address and the, the firewall allows all connections on that network. So the scenario I outlined on the show was you had a customer who was having an issue with one of their internal web servers and they had no way of getting us a VPN connection to assist with the diagnostic work and what I set up was this uh, tunneler here, this reverse tunneler and uh, I'll get I'll do a more screen, screencast in the future but essentially they plug this into their network um, there's a script that kicks off the SSH tunnel which goes out to this machine and through that I then have access uh, kind of a de facto VPN to their network so how this works is we've got this machine here it creates a SSH reverse tunnel with the dash R flag and what happens is it says I'm gonna open up a connection on port 22 of this machine but I'm also going to ask that this side listen on port uh, for our example it's gonna be 55555 and so anything connecting on this machine across that port will be then pushed back through this tunnel to port 22 here then what I do on this side is I'm going to take this machine here and it's going to also start a SSH connection on port 22 but it's going to map a local port forwarding scheme and what it's going to happen or what's going to happen is that local port 4444 is going to be mapped to port 5555 so anything inbound in this connection or this machine on port 44444 will be forwarded to this machine on port 4 or 55555 which will in turn be tunneled to this machine on port 22 then once that's all established we can do one more tunnel connection from this machine which will hit its local host on port 44444 and be tunneled with a dynamic port which I think will will assign it 33333 allowing us to sox proxy a connection through this machine and that'll allow us to reach this web server rather than let me rather than having me talk about it anymore let's take a look at it so first and foremost we have our uh, web server here and you can see the IP address is 192.168.254.1 then we have our tunneler which the IP address is 192.168.254.2 now the IP addresses don't match exactly to the diagram because there was a conflict on my local network and here's our listening server which is on the public internet 18.255.12.1 and here's my safe machine this is the fake house machine which is 172.30.30.3 so right now I cannot ping any of the ones any of the guys at the other site so dot one can't reach dot two can't reach however I can ping 18.255.12.1 all right perfect so everything works out just how we expected likewise here I can hit the web server I should be oh well I suppose it would help to do the address correctly and there I'm hitting the web server and I should be able to also hit the 
public server. Beautiful. Um, and then this guy, just to prove that I'm not cheating here. Can't hit that. Can't hit that. And can't hit that guy. So we are limited everywhere we're going to be. Now, the listener server, we don't actually have to um, worry about. Uh, there was a, a little bit of configure ahead of time, and we'll go through that. Um, I set this up to use a private key exchange so that all of the SSH connections to the listener are going to be going through, or so that they're connect, they're non-interactive connections to that. So the first tunnel we need to build is this guy, and it's gonna. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say SSH. And we're going to say it's a non-interactive flag, so that we don't we don't expect to have to do anything to this session once it's built. We're also going to run it in the background. All right, we're going to give it the reverse flag to say that we want to allow connections from the host we connect to back into ourselves. So we are going to say port five 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 to our local host. It's going to be forwarded to port twenty two. Now we're going to have to use our name, which is listener at 18.255.12.1. And boom, because we don't see any errors, that tunnel is up and connected. Here, we are also going to make a tunnel to the listener, and it's going to be ssh-n-f. Instead of a instead of a reverse, we're going to do a local forwarding, and we're going to say that port 44444 of our local host is going to be mapped to 55555 on listener at that public server address. Perfect. And you could see we did not get any errors, so that tunnel is also built. Last thing we're going to do here, or well, let's before we get going on this, we're going to test this internet connection. So I've already configured this proxy here. Um, so we're using a SOX proxy, which is our local host port 33333, which is perfect. So if I try to navigate to 192.168.254.1, which is our web server. The proxy server is refusing connection, so I shouldn't be able to even get to uh, anything right now. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to close this out. And we are going to now create a tunnel between the safe host and the tunneler at the far end of our connection. And we're going to do dynamic port forwarding. So we are going to do a port of, we're going to leave this one interactive because we need password authentication on the tunneler. Um, if we had set a private uh, key exchange, we wouldn't need to do that. But this lets us play around and gives us more tools. Anyhow, so 44444. So that's telling SSH to use a destination port of 44444. And we're going to say dynamic port, which will be local local host. And we're going to say 33333. Three, three, three. And what the dynamic port is, our local host will listen on port 33333 three, 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 and automatically forward any of its traffic through this tunnel out the other end. And here we are actually going to use, need to use tunneler at localhost. And we're getting the password prompt. So boom, you can see I am now in tunneler at tunneler. IP add, you can see that there I am at the 254.2 address. So I now have access into their system being tunneled across that map like we had shown earlier. So this one connects to here, I make a connection to here, and then I make a third connection which pushes all the way through here. I am now connected to this machine from this machine. There's only one test left and that is to use our SOX proxy to 
reach that web server. And that web server was 196.254.1. Perfect, bingo. Here we're looking at the private system. This should not be available outside of this company. And we can also go to Google. I believe I established a, an internet connection. Yeah, sure enough, there it is. So you can see that all of our traffic now for this web browser is being sent out of this machine over here. Well, I hope that explains everything. If not, leave a comment and I'd be more than happy to respond to you. And as always, listen to the Linux Lugcast where we discuss this and many more fascinating, fascinating topics.